Motion blur in 3D Light is pretty straightforward in terms of how it's, it is set. Look at our DL settings node and the camera. In there you have shutter controls and here we can basically set the default shutter angle and shutter op opening efficiency and closing efficiency. The idea behind that is if you think about a normal shutter in a film camera, it's a disc which rotates and half of the disc has a hole in it. So if the disc rotates 360 degree, half of the time it takes to do a full rotation, light will fall onto the film back. Which means every 180 degrees it lets light in, the other half rotation it blocks the light. So that's what a shutter angle of 180 degrees means. If you think about the shutter opening efficiency and closing efficiency, since the shutter opening is not instantaneous, since the entire shutter doesn't just open and then close, since it rotates, there's a point in the rotation where part of the film back basically is exposed and part of it isn't. And this is what the shutter opening efficiency and closing efficiency takes into account. It simulates the opening and closing time of a shutter, which has an effect on the head and tail of your motion blur. The default values usually work quite well. You really only have to change them if, let's say, your source footage is shot at a different shutter speed to match the motion blur in other render engines. You also have control to individually switch off motion blur for camera, mo camera motion and object deformation motion blur. Camera motion base blur basically takes the movement of the camera into account relative to the object. And deformation motion blur is motion blur happening because of the film subject deforming within itself. An example would be moving waves of a body of water. There is no settings in 3D light for that, so you can either just have motion blur on or off. Okay, let's look at the render settings node. Here you can control the max time samples, shutter open and shutter close settings. For Alembic files, the shutter open and shutter close settings drive which time samples of the cache are being read. Minus 0.25 to plus 0.25 matches 180 degree shutter and effectively is a center shutter. This is very important to know if you're working with renders from other render packages, for example, FX renders from Mantra and so on and so forth. Both departments have to be able to match their renders in terms of motion blur. Max time samples tells Katana how many subframe samples to sample between shutter open and close. This helps with fast, non-linear movements. A classic example are the rotor blades of a helicopter. With two time samples, you would get a linear motion between two frames. So you need at least four to five subframe samples for rotor blades to get the typical rounded motion blur look. Additionally, your Alembic cache itself needs to have subframe samples cached since the motion are interpolated in linear fashion. For HDB10, we set up a ZDEP node in Nuke, but we are actually able to render images with depth of field. If you look at the DL settings node under the under lens, we have the settings for f-stop, iris, focal length, and focal distance. With these settings, we could set up the correct focal distance and render our depth of field in our CG. Generally, it is rare for us to render depth of field instead of defocusing in Nuke, but it is an option. The advantage of rendering with depth of field would be higher accuracy and less working comp, but the downsides outweigh the benefits. The biggest disadvantage is you lose flexibility and any change in depth of field would need a full re-render. Okay, so I've got a little example here for depth of field. As I mentioned earlier, if you look at your settings, you can see the depth of field settings in there. There is f-stop, focal length, and focal distance. So if I set up my focal length, I'm just going to put it as a 50 millimeter length right now, and give it a focal distance of like two. In theory, if I render now, I should get a very blurry image. Our first hurdle is figuring out the focal focus distance. Tana lacks any sort of measurement tools, which means you either have to calculate the distance from the object matrix or rely on other applications to find out the distance. Looking at the grid, I can somewhat guess that the distance is between 10 to 15 units. So yeah, it is easy to set up as you can see, 
but figuring out focal distance can be quite cumbersome. And while 3D defocus is generally available, I wouldn't really bake my depth of field into the render, but rather rely on a new workflow for flexibility. Atmospheric passes is something which often gets rendered by effects, but more and more volume setups are becoming a standard work workflow in lighting, with simple volume renders or rendering VDBs provided by effects, as they can be now fast enough to render in, um, in our render engines. 3D Light especially is very efficient rendering volumes, so it's definitely a good option. If we need to set up just a simple volume light, it can be easily done in the 3D settings node. Switch to the atmosphere, atmosphere settings in the node. The only thing you need to set here is the atmosphere shader. So let's create a quick volume shader for this. Create a material node and create a new material and under Add Shader, select Volume and load DL Atmosphere. There are only three settings, Color, Density and Reflectivity. Let's rename the shader to Atmosphere. And now just drag the shader into the Atmosphere shader slot. And if you render now, you can see a little bit of atmosphere in the render. It gives it a nice and moody feel. If you want to make the volume thicker or thinner, you can change the density in the shader. You see now it automatically goes brighter. I'm going to switch off the depth of field because it's making it hard to see what's going on. You can see how the light source lights up the atmosphere around it. Let's increase the exposure. And now you get that nice volumetric effect. It's super simple to set up and easy to control. You can change the color and that should change the attenuation. For that to work, we need to neutralize our light since that's a solid red right now. Okay, that looks better now. And as you can see, 3D Light is really quite fast rendering volumes with reasonable quality. If we increase the super reflective setting, it should brighten up the scene since that increases how the volumetric particles bounce and reflect light around. Okay, I've saved the Katana file for depth of field and the volume setup in the Katana nodes folder so that if you want to, you can take a look at the setup itself. Right, and that's it for the second part. And we'll jump into module three.